Hey guys, welcome back to another Hartman Controls Protector.net tutorial. Today we're going to be adding and configuring an I.O. panel. The I.O. panel is a general purpose input-output controller. If you've seen our elevator control systems, it uses the same hardware. The complete system contains the I.O. master panel and up to 8 I.O. expanders. Each I.O. expander gives the I.O. master control of 8 inputs and 8 solid state outputs. Up to 8 I.O. expanders can be connected to a single I.O. master, giving us a total of 64 inputs and outputs per I.O. master. Once connected to Protector.net, we can configure these inputs and outputs for a variety of use cases, uh, including unmanaged doors, doors that don't have a reader but have an electric strike, or door contact. We can place the outputs on a schedule so that the door is unlocked during certain times by pulling an external power supply through our solid state relay. We can even connect a door contact to the input to emulate some of that functionality. Another example would be to monitor emergency exits. We can pull a dry contact back to an I.O. expander input and monitor as someone opens the emergency exit. We can also perform actions when this occurs, such as alerting the alarm system via a dry contact. Now that we have an idea of how it all works, let's connect an I.O. panel to the software. Just like our other controllers, we can start by holding the enter button on the master controller for 3 seconds, followed by the escape button. The panel has already gotten an IP address through DHCP, so all I need to do here is give it the server IP address. Click escape once you're satisfied with the IP address, enter to confirm it, and escape one more time. Log in to protector.net if you haven't already, and in a few moments we'll get the unknown notification from the panel. I'll just click right on this notification, now we're on the add panel page. For the panel model, I'll make sure I select PoE IO64. Fill out the name, site, and fill in how many I.O. expander boards are attached to the I.O. controller. Make sure you fill out the TCP connection section if you gave the controller a static IP address. Click Save, and Continue Configuration. On the Options tab, disable the tamper sensor if you desire. Click Save on that page and select the I.O. tab. Here is where we configure all the inputs and outputs attached to this I.O. panel. The top drop down menu here picks which I.O. expander you are configuring. In this case we just have the one. Let's start by configuring one of our outputs. I'll scroll down and select Output 2. I'm going to rename this output to Alarm System. And I'm going to give it a function of auxiliary output. Now this output can be triggered by any inputs on the same I.O. master. Next, I'll select input 1 from the top of the page. Let's pretend this is connected to a door contact on an interior door. I'll name it interior door 101. I'll give it a function as auxiliary input. I want this door contact to trigger the alarm system if someone opens the door between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. To do this, I'll need to assign a schedule so that this input is only monitored during those specific times. We'll need to create a new input time zone. I'll save what we've done so far on this page. I'll head on over to the add input time zone screen. I'll add a new input time zone. I'll name this time zone monitor 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. I'll change the entire day to not monitored and then add a time span over it. I'll replicate this schedule on the whole day. And I'll just click save. Oh, make sure I select a partition. I'll head back over to the Edit I.O. panel. 
I select our input coming from the door contact and I'll assign it a schedule of monitor 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. Inputs and outputs can also be assigned to a holiday group if we want the assigned time zone to be overridden on a holiday. Alarm systems vary with the kind of output they expect, so in my case, all my needs is a pulse. So I'll select pulse, selected output high as the action, and for the output, I'll select the alarm system. I can place a delay on this pulse, and a duration, in which case I'll set one second. Lastly, since this is a door contact, I'll select normally closed on the bottom here. I'll scroll down, click save. I'll do an update to the panel, and then time travel to somewhere between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. So it's about 4 a.m. panel time now. I have a short across input 1 simulating a door contact. I'm just going to simulate opening the door by taking that off. And as you can see there, we triggered the alarm system just as expected. So that's just a typical use case of an I.O. board, unmanaged doors, uh, lots of other possibilities out there. Uh, we go into some more detail in the software guide as well. That, uh, that concludes this tutorial. For more information on the I.O. boards and what you can do with them, check out the applicable chapter in the software guide.